camera stops so I have to carry on. So yeah, just how you do the YouTube thing, you know what I mean, how it well works. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I'd better go back because I've lost track, I've lost my train of thought. Anyway, it's to do with this video to do that Earl made by Messenger 7. He's, he's been on YouTube for a while. I've known him for ages. And we've exchanged videos about a while, haven't we, Earl? Like, um, I remember you made one about tattoos. Do you remember that one? We had a tattoo exchange. And um, we had a good exchange once about oh, about bonobos. Do you remember that stuff about bonobos? Anyway, I guess if you're watching this you won't, and you don't know about that, you probably won't be interested in that bit. But uh, yeah, that was all interesting. But some of the people on there I don't know very well. I think Pirro's made a comment. Um, yeah, I don't know what the three one four stands for. Three forty. Maybe that's maybe that's when he was born. Three forty in the morning, or maybe three. Maybe there's like a mathematical significance to it. Three plus one is four. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't really matter, does it? Either way, um, or maybe it's to do with. The philosopher Pyrrho, you know, because Pyrrho is named after the or named himself after the philosopher Pyrrho. So maybe it's something to do with that. Maybe book. Maybe it's like chapter and verse, chapter three verse, and it doesn't matter, does it? It's not important. Anyway, um, this, this whole video that Earl's making is about you know, advice to young YouTubers. No, that's what I'm talking about. Young, because you don't know whether people are young or not, do you? Really, it could be old, but. Um, you know, people who haven't spent a lot of time here, made a lot of videos, and what you might want to do if you're making videos, you know, do you want to be popular, or do you want to, um, I don't know, meet the love of your life? Do you want to have it, just have a conversation about something that you're interested in? You know, what what are you doing it for? I guess, and what what the right way to behave is, and I don't know. It must be funny coming on to YouTube right now because obviously I've been here a long time. <laughs> Sound like an old duffer. I am an old duffer. It's a beautiful day outside, actually. It's been really raining hard for the last couple of days. But uh, today it looks nice, actually. I was just I was walking the dog. I made a video whilst I was out, actually. A couple of videos whilst I was out. About, I don't, I, well, one of them was about 13 minutes long, so I doubt, I doubt very many people have watched that. But, you know, that, that all stuff to do with that minute, about videos being short is interesting. Um, I guess that's something to do with advice for a a new YouTube user don't make your videos too long but then again you know apparently because that's, this is where it gets complicated you see because YouTube now counts views by the minute doesn't it you know rewards views by the minute if you're a partner you've monetized your videos the number of minutes engagement you've had apparently is one of the things that counts and one of the reasons apparently why let's play videos you know people play computer games or video games online and sure they play one of the reasons why they're so popular amongst the high, you know, the more popular user, users is because they tend to be longer, you know, you can get Let's Plays which are 15 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes long and people will watch those all the way through because people are very concerned about the game and because they, I guess they were like a story or something, anyway, people watch those and, um, what was I saying? Oh yes, yeah, so that just flies in the face of that whole idea that you've got to get it all in three minutes or something. Actually, I sometimes do watch YouTube whilst I'm watching the telly and the ad breaks on telly are about two minutes. So um, I sometimes, I'll be watching Top Gear or something on telly. And then I'll come to an advert. And I'll put, I'll put a short, I'll, I'll find a short video on YouTube. Play that in the ad break. It's fucking stupid, isn't it? But yeah, well, that's, that's how it works, isn't it? I don't know, it's funny actually. The we It's a funny name, the weasel, isn't it? Weasel. All those E's. Yeah. Sorted for E's and whiz. Um, sort of for ease and wheeze it should be, isn't it? But yeah, that advice is very good. I think girls talking about fishing. I, I guess he must go fishing. It looks like, looks it looks like he's in the right environment to go fishing a lot. So I guess he's talking about fishing, and and casting your hook, casting your hook early. That's what I always do in my videos. I always make sure in the first thirty seconds, fifteen seconds, exactly what the point of the be making, you know, is really because I think that's really, really, really important to get your get your point in early. You know, set out your stall. You Not know, like a PowerPoint. You know, like a PowerPoint. If you do PowerPoints, your first slide should always include. But I say should. Who am I to say? But quite a lot of them, are the, the better presentations, they'll say really early on, first or second slide, what the end point's going to be. 
You know what I mean? So this is what you're going to get out of this presentation, it'll say. And then it'll tell you how it's going to, how you're going to get there. And then it'll take you there. And then the final slide is to remind you where you've been. Now say what you're going to say, say it, and then say what you've said. That's how they usually phrase it. Say what you're going to say, say it, and then say what you've said. And that the same is true here, you know, I, as I say, I'm, I'm really scrupulous with that. I always start my videos, with, and I always prepare for them. I, you know, I usually get a, clear, a nice clear background, make sure my camera's fixed on a tripod properly, make sure the lighting's right, um, make sure I've shaved and I'm ready to you know, face my public. Um, usually get the introduction up there running first of course and all those things are important because you don't want to lose people you know what I mean because it's if you if you've got some interesting content you know whether it be about what cactus I'm looking at a cactus right now it's a beautiful cact cactus actually it's it's, it's it's like having a plant and a stone at the same time because it's all the beauty of a plant but none of the responsibility I kind of wish my dog was like that I've got uh, I've got a dog we used to have two dogs but one died anyway so, say I was making a video about a cactus or a dog or a stone or something like that. I'd need to talk about it early, wouldn't I? You know, I'd get that in early. And, um, what was I saying? I, I, I wouldn't make a video about those things, though, because that's not what interests me, really. Um, you know, I'm interested in all kinds of other stuff, really. And you've got to, if, because it, you know, attention span is so short, isn't it, these days? That's the thing. And there's so many demands on people's time. So much comp. I'm just looking around this room, you know, where I'm in right now. I've got my lap, my desktop is over there, desktop computer. I've got Netflix, so I could be watching Enemy of the State or something right now on there, or uh, or uh, what Iron Man 2. I could be watching that. I've got the television over there, so I could be putting, you know, it, it's I could watch Mock the Week or something on Dave because that's on 24 7. So I could be doing that. That's a demand of my time. I've got bookshelves here. Not really as much as I used to. I've got books here. I've got magazines. I'm in Cornwall, which is a really nice place. That's a demand on my time. I could be out walking on the hills. So you know what I mean? I've got all these demands on my... Not demands, because I don't have to do them. We don't, none of us have to do any of this stuff. But just um, opportunities. Let's put it that way. Opportunities. There's so many opportunities to, to attend to different things, isn't there, really? I could be doing... Um, and, and, in, and, you know, on, online, you know, I could be, uh, I don't know, watching... Um, arty kind of videos on Vimeo or I could be on Vlogaheads having that kind of an experience or Funny or Die watching some, some funny comedy, some good comedy on there I guess, I don't, actually I don't like most of it but you know there, there's some comedy available or some porn I don't really watch porn but you know it's there it's a uh, it's a uh, it has its appeal doesn't it, it's making its appeals to you uh, what else is there, there's blogs, lots of blogs, people write interesting things about things that happened of course, of course, there's email to attend, to be attended to all the time. Uh, Facebook, I don't, I don't do Facebook very much. But you know, it's it's people like it, don't they? People and Twitter, oh, and Twitter a lot. I don't do that much either. But you know, so I don't know how people have time to do anything else really. And when people have, are um, are being appealed to, like all these things, saying, "Look at me, look at me, look at me," then it's very important. To make sure that what you do um, competes with that clamour, really. You've got to compete, haven't you? It's, a, it's a competitive. It's a competitive world. You know what I mean? You've got to uh, say what you're going to say. You know, <laughs> say, look, don't watch Netflix. Don't look at Enemy of the State. Look, what you're going to see, what I'm saying to you now, is far better than Enemy of the State. It's more engaging than Top Gear or Mock the Week. And it's better than Walking the Hills. It's better than all these books. You've got to make that kind of claim, you know what I mean? State your claim early. Hook them in. Better than pornography. Better than um, podcasts, you know. You've got to be better than podcasts. I listen to, uh, what do I listen to? I listen to the Friday Night Comedy on the BBC podcast. Just funny, it's really funny. It's like Sandy Toxvig does it. I don't know if you know Sandy Toxvig. She's a Danish, well, she lives in Britain now, but she's Danish by birth. Danish um, comedian, I suppose you'd say, but she's really sm sounds smart anyway, and, and is a really good presenter. And uh, who's on the Jeremy Hardy's on? I really like Jeremy Hardy too. He, he's a regular contributor to um, 
Friday Night Comedy, the Nukes Quiz. So uh, that's the so the, you know you, you're competing with Jeremy Hardy and Sandy Toxpick, you know, when you make a video, and uh, and they're brilliant, and all the rest of the people on there, you know, Melvin Braggs on the radio and AC Grayling and uh, who else is on the radio? You know, I, DJ, I mean DJs aren't hard to compete with, but then the, but the music is, isn't it? I mean, the, uh, there's lots of music on the radio, and uh, you can just turn it on and just and it's just playing. Or, or if you've got that, what's it called? Um, God, my kids have got it. It's like a music service on on the internet. What's it called? I keep thinking Napster because that's like that's 15 years ago. Isn't it? Whatever that service is, you know that you, you kind of sign up for it. You pay five quid or six quid a month for all this music. Anyway, you know, so you're competing with every piece of music that's ever been written. You know, you could be listening to the Beatles' White Album, or you could be listening to some dubstep if people still listen to dubstep. I've got a student, he's just graduated actually, but he's really interested in like traditional cultures, but he's also, you know, a modern guy, and he works, he's a member of a whole bunch of like traditional societies down here in Cornwall, including a Morris dancing team, you know, they go around and perform these traditional Morris dances in various villages and festivals and stuff during the season, and he, uh, he put together a dubstep Morris dance troupe, which I thought was brilliant, dubstep Morris dance. They're doing Morris dances to dubstep. <laughs> marvellous. But, um, but, you know, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. You know, that's the kind of thing which should attract a person's attention, you know, dubstep Morris dance. And I think that's important when you're making videos because you are, as I say, competing with all these other media and all these other demands on your attention, and cactuses and stones and all that kind of stuff. So who's going to stay around and listen to you? ramble on when they could be watching Top Gear or when they could be watching Enemy of the State which I have to say is actually one of my favourite films and very per very um, prescient you know all that stuff with the NSA and uh, Edward Snowden and the Bradley Manning stuff and all that it just feels like oh yeah Enemy of the State that's that was a film that's kind of ahead of its time so when when Edward Snowden was um, in the news recently I watched Enemy of the State again about four times I've, I've seen it about 15 times that film so I watched it again I really like it I like the um, the thing that really dates it is the game console. You know, the kid's got a game console in it, and uh, I've got a whole. I've got still got a collection of old game consoles upstairs under my, under my bed. But um, it's great. It's got this old game console. But yeah, so you do have to kind of lay your your hook. I think is the phrase that uh, Bike Messenger Seven Earl used. You know, you got to uh, bait your hook early so that. People think, oh yeah, this video is going to be really, really worth watching, you know. There's going to be some important insights, or I'm going to be fantastically entertained by this video, or, or this is going to con make a valuable contribution. Because uh, yeah, I'm saying all this, you know, all about these other competitions for your attention. But of course, here on YouTube itself, there's competitions, isn't there, you know. There's, I don't know how many channels there are now. Some 78 minutes of video I read recently. 78 minutes of video uploaded. No, hang on. 78, might be 72, anyway it's hours really, 78 hours of video, that's right, 78 hours of video uploaded every minute and of course 99.999% of it is shite, um, but that's, you know, that's kind of fine isn't it really, so, but there's a lot of stuff there and you don't know before you click on it after time, so you have to develop a, as a viewer I mean, obviously, yeah, as a viewer, you kind of have to develop a sense of knowing when something's going to be shite or not within the first 30 seconds. And that's, you know, people do turn off very, very quickly. You know, some people have got introductions on their videos, haven't they? I'm going to make an introduction to my videos, I think. I'm going to make a quite a short one. Because I've seen introductions sometimes, like, a minute long, I've watched. A minute and six seconds is the longest introduction I've ever seen. And the, the videos this chap makes, whose video introduction used to be a minute over a minute long. Some of the videos were shorter than that, so it's like a massive introduction, and then he'd say something in this bimbly fashion, and then it would be the end. But um, obviously, I think your introduction probably has to match the production value of your video itself. It always looks a bit weird to me when you've got this like high production, what appear to be high production value introduction. High production value introduction. Sounds funny, doesn't it? All those shouldn't sound. So you make that, and then, uh, you know, so you've got like exploding space rockets and words flying across the screen and then it cuts from that and it's just some bloke sitting behind a webcam that always looks like a bit of a, a bit jarring to me 
Now I think if you're going to do that, you should get a green screen, you know, and put your tie on and comb your hair and stuff and make yourself look smart. Um, one of my old videos was a. Uh, I, I quite like it actually. I quite like it. It's, it's called um, what's it called? Something about cake. So you're looking at my cakes, and I always it was one of the first ones I made that were like I don't know. It's just a bit different. But anyway, I, I realised looking back on it that. Behind me, I've got left my bedroom door open. Spare bedroom door, actually, not not my bedroom door. But the spare bedroom was behind me when I was making it, and it, it's slightly open. Every time I look at that video, I thought, oh, I should shut the fucking door. Or even, you know, I wish I'd hung a curtain up or something so I had a nice plain background. I mean, nobody complains. You know, people are very. I think that's another piece of advice, isn't it? People are very generous here and do let you get away with stuff. So it's not worth having a. worrying enormously, I don't think, about that, because it's. Um, you know, we're just regular people, aren't we? We're not broadcasters. Um, I mean, I think we should aspire to the condition of broadcasting. I do think we should try to be as good as, as Jeremy Clarkson is on, on Top Gear, or Daryl Brian is on Mot the Week, or uh, Will Smith is on Enemy of the State. And, you know, I do think we should try to be as good as we can, really. And, 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 in, and I do think we should be scripting our videos. I always script all of my videos really precisely, you know. And try to and, and usually hone them, you know, so I'll script it and then put it in the drawer and then come back to it. Cut out any part that's any got any fluff in it, you know, because you've got to get your, got to make it punchy and concise. So I always do that, you know, because a good script is important. You know, Enemy of the Straight State's got a great script, and um, you know, when you see it, like, like when you see a film that's got a great script, like um, what's that film, uh, Wings of Desire, you know, the, the script for Wings of Desire, Wim, Wim Vendor's film was written, I think, by Peter Hankey, was it? Somebody like that, anyway. And it's brilliant, you know, it's a really, really good script. And other films that have got good scripts as well, you know, plays that have got good scripts. You can't just let them run, can you? You know what I mean? You can't just, you think, oh, this is really boring, I can't watch that, because it's like it needed editing, you know, you know, someone needed to put this script in the drawer overnight, but some people do that on video, some people do, don't script their videos, and they really should. And, um, and you've got to take into account the needs of the viewer. You know, you've got to recognise at all times that you're talking to, to a, a human being, because it's, it's easily forgotten that. So I was thinking about this last year, about um, digital citizenship. I don't know if you've come across that. Digital citizenship. They teach it, and there's a lot of schools these days. And uh, it's basically just to stop people being cyber bullies and, and, and flaming one another. It's, it's about um, trying to recognise that the person that you're speaking to online is a human being because it's easy to forget that isn't it you know what I mean and uh, you know either take either be insulting or just take them for granted and assume that they're just willing to listen to anything you say you know a lot of people I don't I, I try to avoid this myself and I guess the people like most of the people at least I know about um, wouldn't do this but some people just think that the people who are listening to videos will just listen to them whatever they say you know and and can just can almost hold them hostage, you know, just expect to listen to videos. But like but like Earl says, and he's 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 smart on this one, he's Earl. You know, you've got to wear a hat and you've got to stand by a river really. And you've also got to um to, you know, be be um be concise, be direct. Um, you know, respect the local bylaws, you know, you don't have to be weird about it but if you're talking to someone it's up to you and the person you're talking to to arrive at a common language um, it doesn't matter what that language is you know it can be a language of shouting can't it or swearing or Serbo-Croat or whatever language it is language of signs and symbols I was thinking about this the other day because one of other, one of Earl's videos recently was um, this chap young young man dancing in a park or just showing some dance moves with his hands it was really great and I thought oh yeah I'd like to make a response to that and I might do that I might make a video waving my arms around in a similar fashion but that's a kind of language isn't it you know I mean it's not a language in which words follow one another it's just a um, call and response you know I say something you say something back I do something you do something back but you negotiate the language in which you speak together a lang you know conversation is something that is built up collaboratively. It's not something that um, is not. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, because that, that's again, that's important, isn't it? Because when you when you make a video, 
you have to bear in mind that the person that's watching your video, and I usually think of it as just one person, it varies who that person is, but I've usually got one person in mind, either a real person or sometimes a fictional character I've talked to, or um, and a kind of idealised version of the amalgam of some people. You know, some people, I used to make videos specifically to people, I used to make videos to my kids. Um, and sometimes I've still got them in mind when I'm making a video, or myself in 10 years' time, sometimes I'm doing that. Or sometimes specific people, like Earl, I sometimes make videos, even though I don't tell him, I'm making videos specifically with him in mind as a kind of ideal audience. I think, alright, that's the audience I'm aiming for. It's even the word audience is crap, isn't it? Because as soon as you start thinking of audience, it, you, you're saying it as if you're the broadcaster and they're the listener, as opposed to we're here in a collaborative joint enterprise of forming a conversation together. So yeah, that's the conversant that I'm trying to engage with, I'll put it that way. But you know, but sometimes it's my mum, or sometimes it's somebody I really hate, or not the same time, obviously I don't hate my mum, so I wouldn't, that wouldn't be the same person. Um, but those things are really important, and making sure that your video, as I say, is tidy and look, and you know, well, the shot well framed, and you got your introduction sorted out, and make, and of course, I always put, I think I do at least, links to like my Zazzle store, uh, where you can buy T-shirts, and uh, my Facebook page, and my Twitter feed, because I do like being followed. Um, and I think it's really just I didn't I didn't mention this, but it's really important actually. I think it's always important to have like a signature line, a signature thing that you say, you know like, uh, what's he called, Richard Coughlin used to always say, may God be less at the end of his videos, he stopped doing it now, and uh, the amazing atheist said something like, <laughs> it wasn't shut the fuck up, but it was, um, oh I don't know, he'd do this thing with his fingers, like Ted Rogers used to do on 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, <laughs> the amazing Ted Rogers, 3, 2, 1, no I can't do it. Anyway, the amazing atheist used to do something like that. Peace the fuck out, that was it. Three, two, one. Peace the fuck out. Um, and other people do it as well. Don't run automatic, I think, is uh, one of Bionic Dancers or, um, uh, or Gary, who always starts his videos with making a video. <laughs> and then he always pretends like he doesn't know the camera's on. Or uh, who else does those? I'm trying to think of other people who've got like strap lines. Dorian Stretton started doing one, that's think that's good. One and only Dorian Stretton, says, or something like that. Maybe I've been wrong. Um, yeah, if you can, I don't know. It's good to ask questions apparently. That, that, that's something that's important. And uh, it's, it's good to get that in quite early on. If you've got a question, actually, it's a bit irritating sometimes. Because, like, you know, these um, uh, entertainment channels. The ones that use that are broadcasting, social media broadcasting channel, like uh, SourceFed is the one I'm thinking of. I don't subscribe to SourceFed, but I did for a while. Because they're just like part of the Philip DeFranco empire, aren't they really? But, um, what am I talking about? Oh yeah, because they always ask questions in there. So, what do you think of this? And they don't give a fuck. I shouldn't say this, but they probably don't give a fuck what you think. They don't care what you think. It's a way of sounding as if you care, as if you're in a conversation when you're... Because a lot of conversation is kind of fake, isn't it? I don't know if that's always the case, but I suspect if you're getting more than 10,000 views for your video, you're not in a conversation anymore. Actually, people who... Some people do it, like the Vlogbrothers do it, you know, Hank and whatever he's called, Vlogbrothers. Because they have a conversation between themselves, which is public, on video. Or they used to, I don't know if still doing it or not. But they're also kind of active in their... Uh, comment section. And Lacey Green kind of does that a bit, doesn't she? A mixed effect, I think. Yeah, it's interesting stuff, all that. Uh, but then there's people who never talk, you know, people like Pat Condell who doesn't ever talk, just never comment. He just uploads, really. Uh, and other, other people as well do that, don't they? Premier's frequency. Um, a few others. I've done that once or twice. In fact, I used to do that when I first started on YouTube. Because I didn't really know it was a social media site like, because I'm so sick. I just uploaded videos just so I wouldn't lose them. So I wasn't talking to anybody, I was just talking to myself. 
And then I was quite surprised when one or two people started commenting. I thought, oh, it's a bit weird. People commenting on the video, that's like a community here or something. Oh, yeah. So that was a bit odd. Um, but yeah, so but I do think it's important to um, to think about these things and you know to get your message in early and obviously try and get as many subscribers as you can. And that's because uh, that's in a sense that's the competition, isn't it? Really, get as many people as you can involved because that's great. Um, get your message in early. Say what you're going to say. Say it and say what you said. Uh, make sure. I feel like I'm repeating myself. Don't repeat yourself. Make sure you comb your hair. Make sure you keep your trousers on. Um, don't do anything against YouTube's terms of service. Um, only upset certain people. Pick your enemies carefully. Um, yeah, there's probably lots of other advice really for YouTubers. Young YouTubers. See, is this a young YouTuber thing again, you see? Because you're probably not young watching this. I don't know what the what the I don't know what the average age is watching YouTube. I read recently that the majority of YouTubers are female. Did you know that? I don't know if it's true or not. They say they are, but you never know because people can say all kinds of things, don't they? Um, you can put your gender down as what you like. Add your age, shoe size. Doesn't ask for your shoe size. Probably should. Have a size ten. I can hear an alarm going off somewhere else. Anyway, that's uh, it's probably long enough, really. I'm trying to keep this under three minutes. I don't know, I may have gone over that slightly, but um, I hope that was some uh, use to you and that uh, you're all keeping well. And I'll just leave you with this. <laughs>